My name is Aaron Brazell. I'm a senior web engineer at Tenop, and the answer to the question, is Tenop hiring, is yes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about asynchronous WordPress today, and I'm going to try to move quickly because uh, I know we're all delayed from keynote issues and all. Um, asynchronous WordPress is sort of a concept that uh, all the events and hooks that are in WordPress itself um, over time can just sort of like bog down an entire page load. And anybody who's done any significant development with WordPress over the years uh, has probably had a client or a site or something along those lines where uh, the edit screen, for instance, just takes forever to load. Uh, maybe you get 504s on a publish. There's all this stuff happening in WordPress and it's all uh, plugins. What makes WordPress great is also some of the things that hinders WordPress in a lot of ways. All these hooks exist for plugins and themes to hook into and add functionality, but that all comes at a cost and that all comes, uh, uh, it, it makes the whole uh, loading and execution of WordPress on a page load uh, incrementally slower and slower and slower the more events that you have. So um, I want to talk to you today about some uh, ideas and I don't have obviously the time to like, go into the technical. I'm going to leave this to your imagination and your own research. Um, but I'm, I'm going to sort of hopefully inspire you about how to uh, get through some of this stuff and alleviate some bottlenecks that we all experience all the time with WordPress uh, on scale. The problem, dun dun dun. Um, every time WordPress loads, events are fired. Uh, and as I said, that just slows down the page when you have a lot of things happening all at once. Um, some of, uh, a lot of plugins hook into these hooks, init, admin init, plugins loaded, save post is egregious. Um, talk a little bit about that in just a minute. Um, and every, everything takes time to complete. Um, one of the common things that anybody who's done real WordPress development over the years has probably run into is when you, somebody writes an article and hits the publish button, all these things happen. It might be a third party service that takes the post content, analyzes it, throws back a bunch of tags that are suggested. Could be uh, uh, a, a social thing where Facebook is notified or Twitter is notified or whatever. Um, it could be uh, you have a, a, you create a user on the back end and there's some sort of plug in there that goes out into the ether and pulls out uh, information about that person and pre-populates their, uh, their profile in WordPress. All this stuff takes time. Uh, so asynchronous events are not the heroes we want. They are in fact the heroes we need. And that's somebody who's clearly mangled that quote. Um, I want my slide advance. Oh, there we go. And we've got to have the picture. <laughs> so Tenup did a uh, project for one of our longtime clients, uh, TechCrunch, um, a couple years ago. And I don't know how many people have been longtime readers of TechCrunch, but if you've been a longtime reader of TechCrunch, then you'll uh, remember the bad old days when TechCrunch took forever to load uh, a single article. And there were reasons for that. I won't get into all the details, but, uh, but Crunchbase, which is sort of a, a related API that sort of is a database of investors and entrepreneurs and startups and venture capitalists and all this stuff, uh, was uh, was communicated with on every article. Like every time an article was saved, it would analyze the content, find all the different people and stuff that's referenced in that article that's in Crunchbase, and then it would create these cards for all the articles. Uh, that took a long time. I don't really know uh, why this Crunchbase API couldn't have been optimized. Uh, by the TechCrunch folks, but it wasn't. Uh, so this was causing real significant page load all the time. And, and a couple of our guys, uh, Eric Mann, who is here somewhere, I don't know if he's in the room. Uh, John Block is another one who I don't think is here at WordCamp US this, this time around. Uh, they really came up with this concept of, they created this, this class that TechCrunch has since uh, um, open sourced. And it's a class that can be included, required as a file as many times as possible, but it'll never be instantiated more than once. And we get into it really quick, but I'm not gonna go into detail, so you'll have to look at the GitHub repo. Um, what happens is you extend this class, and it's gotta have a uh, prepared data 
uh, uh, method in it, which is protected. It's also got to have a run action method that is also protected. And then there is an action variable, which is a protected variable that actually contains the, the hook that you want. Let's just call it save post. Uh, that for every hook that you want to make asynchronous, you will have this class that extends the parent class. We'll have save post as your action. Uh, prepared data is actually a method that takes a numerical array of parameters and think, like save post has three, not all of them are required, but three uh, arguments that go with it, post ID, post object, and uh, uh, an update argument, which is a Boolean. Uh, so you're going to get these, this raw data into this method. You never call it directly, but you can get this thing into your method where then you like do some sanitization, whatever, and return out of that method all the actual parameters that would go with, say, post. The next one is run action, which takes that data which is now the actual parameters that say post would use, uh, post ID, post, and update, and you can create a, a hook right there. What actually is happening, I'm just gonna like, you're gonna have to look into the code on this. <clears throat> it's actually running on the shutdown hook, and instead of then using save post hook to fire an action, you use WP async save post, which runs on shutdown, after everything's been done, so you can do all these expensive transactions after the fact without hindering the page load. It's a really cool idea, and we've used it on a few other projects recently that were super intense, um, and I wish I could get more into the details because it's a whole lot easier to show than talk about, but I would just say, as you guys are developing, look at this as an option. It's open source, it's free, um, and it's really easy to implement and it really just increases your page loads across the board. So here are my references. I do have a blog post this morning that I published on technosailor.com. You can go look at it. It gives a little bit more context here. This slide deck is available. Um, the GitHub repo is linked from there. The documentation on that is super easy. Play with it and write about it and share it with the community and share it with me and show me what you do with it. Um, I'm Aaron. I appreciate the time. and. Uh, um, I'll talk to you, if not today, or if not after this session, throughout the day I'm around. Thank you.